Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in the next half hour, Montgomery County Council members recognize six residents at a special ceremony commemorating Black History Month. And later, we'll celebrate the Chinese New Year with some residents in Gaithersburg. But first, the Council's Planning, Housing, and Economic Development Committee recently held some work sessions to improve the county's development review process. And as Susan Kennedy reports, the goal for Council members is also to help boost economic development here in the county. It's no secret getting through the development review process here in Montgomery County can be tricky. But members of the Council's Planning, Housing and Economic Development Committee are working on several proposals to streamline that process in the hopes of saving applicants time and money. So what we want to do is really address fundamentally the whole development process and make it efficient. You know, without compromising the voice of our residents, but looking at the government processes and how well those are being managed. One of the proposed bills would improve the speed and process of approving record plats. And the other measure stems from recommendations from the county's Department of Permitting Services and the Planning Department that also involve changes to the record plat review process. Though technical in nature, council members say these bills will streamline the process, eliminate duplication, and make Montgomery County an easier place to do business. Uh, and also to make it cl the rules clearer. Uh, whichever side of a, of a matter you're on, it's, it's often a mystery. The hope is, you know, we will begin to kind of improve our image in terms of, you know, people who want to do good development know that they can get the job done here in Montgomery County. And then when we create these master plans, you know, that call for our community to be built this way or that way, you know, in order to make this a better place to live, we actually are relying on the private sector most of the time to bring that to reality. So we want to have a, a good environment for that to happen. The Fed Committee has also given the nod to the creation of an ombudsman position to work as a facilitator for commercial and residential projects. It's hoped this person will bring about tangible improvements to the process that save both time and money. It's going to require a lot of coordination between agencies and a certain amount of collaboration that we're not used to. And, and frankly, this has been uh, an issue that we've seen over needed uh, to be addressed over the years. Basically what it's going to be is a person inside the county government for really, really big, important projects, you know, to kind of help shepherd them through. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. Mark your calendars. On March 7th, Council Member Roger Berliner will host a forum to address future school and transportation planning. The meeting is open to the public and will be held from 8.30 a.m. until 4 p.m. at Bethesda Chevy Chase High School. Council Member Berliner said he called for the meeting because he believes the county is at a critical point and it is important to discuss the county's needs as it continues to grow and urbanize. Well, one, I met with our PTA community many, many times, and they say to me, Councilmember Berliner, what we don't understand is when there's proposed new development, is our school system, our planners, our county, and our council all working together to figure out whether we have the infrastructure necessary to accommodate any new growth. And I felt it was a fair question, and it's always the question on people's minds. And we have a lot of master plans that are coming before us that contemplate additional growth. So how do we do this? So the basic notion was let's bring everybody together and have an honest dialogue, hopefully a constructive dialogue on what we do today and maybe how we could do it better. Again, that forum will be held Saturday, March 7th from 8.30 a.m. until 4 p.m. at Bethesda Chevy Chase High School, which is located at 4301 East West Highway. To register for the event, go to MontgomeryCountyMD.gov slash Berliner. Montgomery County Council Member Craig Rice, who also heads the Council's Education Committee, will host the first of five public forums on March 2nd to provide information and seek input on the programs and budgets of the county's school system and its community college. Joining Mr. Rice at these community meetings will be the Chief Operating Officer of Montgomery County Public Schools and the President of Montgomery College. The first forum will be held at 6.30 p.m. on March 2nd at the Silver Spring Civic Building. Future meetings are scheduled on March 9th in Sandy Spring, March 11th in Gaithersburg, March 16th in Germantown, and March 23rd in Potomac. For more information about these forums, you can contact Mr. Rice's office at 240-777-7955.
A national search for the next superintendent of Montgomery County Public Schools is now underway, and the Board of Education is hoping you will participate in the process. As part of the search process, several public forums have been scheduled at area schools on March 4th and March 5th, where students, staff, and other stakeholders can let officials know what they are looking for in the next leader of MCPS. An online survey has also been posted on the MCPS website for those not available to attend a public forum. The board expects to have a new superintendent in place by July 1st. Montgomery College and Holy Cross Health have signed a new five-year collaboration agreement to expand the educational partnership between the two organizations. MCTV's Danielle Stetsky has details. The new agreement is an extension of an existing partnership that spans more than a decade. It will enhance the education opportunities for students, college employees, community members, and Holy Cross Health. It's an excellent opportunity for our students, as well as the employees of Holy Cross Hospital to have a mutually beneficial relationship. Over the next five years, hundreds of aspiring healthcare professionals will attend programs on the Germantown campus. And probably up to eight or nine hundred students across health services Montgomery College-wide will benefit from this relationship with Holy Cross Germantown Hospital. The collaboration agreement will also create workforce development and career opportunities in nursing, health sciences, and STEM fields. What better way to ensure a company has access to the most talented and skilled workforce than to locate on a college campus that is producing its future employees. Holy Cross Germantown Hospital anchors the Hercules Pinckney Life Science Park on Montgomery College's Germantown campus. The Holy Cross Germantown Hospital success here on our campus is just the first example of what we're working toward. Our Life Sciences Park is going to be able to accommodate companies, not just in life sciences, but cyber, technology, science-related um, industry. Montgomery College and Holy Cross Health's partnership was established in 2004 with the opening of the Holy Cross Health Center on Montgomery College's Tacoma Park Silver Spring campus. The original partnership helped expand nurse enrollment by 38 percent and graduation by 48 percent. Holy Cross supported the partnership with contributions totaling $600,000 for capital and program enhancements at the college. For County Report This Week in Germantown, I'm Danielle Stetsky. It's been a busy and cold winter for Montgomery County firefighters. Joining us to talk about that is Public Information Officer Pete Perringer. Pete, what should residents know as we welcome the month of March this week and Daylight Savings Time next week? Well, we're certainly looking forward to the springtime, that's for sure. The last month has been extremely busy. We've had a, a, a lot of cold weather, extremely cold weather, and that's been tough on the firefighters. In fact, last uh, couple of weeks, we've had millions of dollars worth of property damage. Several firefighters have been injured. Dozens of people have been displaced in fires. So we're looking forward to the spring and the change of the seasons. Now, with the change of the seasons, when you change your clock, change your battery and your smoke alarm, we want you to check your smoke alarms, make sure that they're operating, have a plan as we go into this uh, spring season. Thank you, Pete. We always appreciate you coming into the studio. Safety is certainly on the mind of the Maryland State Police who are trying to get the word out about the importance of the state's move over law. If you see emergency vehicles or tow trucks pulled over on the shoulder, it is important to move over a lane to give them more room to operate. And if you cannot do that, slow down. Within the last year, uh, two to three troopers have been hitting Montgomery County alone on the side of the road conducting traffic stops. Um, it's very important that you know we can get citizens to get the awareness out to move over um, for our safety as well as tow trucks on the side of the road. And if you're in a position where you can't move over, to slow down, slow down to the point where you're very you're just creeping past the car, and you can you know we're sure that we're safe on the side of the road. It assures you that the citizen we have stopped is safe as well. A fine for violating the state's move over law will cost you $110 and one point on your license. Coming up on County Report this week, some Montgomery County Public School students attend a screening of the movie Selma. And reliving history is the focus of the upcoming Civil Rights Freedom Tour. We'll preview this educational trip right after this. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. 
By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. You're invited to the inaugural Montgomery County Green Fest on March 28, 2015 at Montgomery College Tacoma Park Silver Spring. Join us for an afternoon of national and local speakers, demonstrations, exhibitors, kids activities, and much more. The Montgomery County Green Fest is a free event with something for everyone to enjoy. So bring the whole family to Silver Spring on March 28th and help make the first Montgomery County Green Fest a day to remember. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. Six longtime Montgomery County residents whose activism on civil rights played key roles in the civil rights movement spoke to the county council about history as they lived it. The presentation was part of the council's regular meeting where time was set aside to recognize Black History Month. Council President George Leventhal spoke about the significance of the roles these residents played in our county's past. Um, you know, my commitment, and I think all elected officials uh, in this county, certainly including County Executive Leggett, are deeply committed to addressing the disparities that remain in education, health care, public safety, especially incarceration, housing, and in other policy areas. We are a wonderful, diverse county, and we attract people from throughout the world, and we have many, many different people from many, many different backgrounds. In fact, there is no demographic group in Montgomery County today that constitutes a majority of our population. But the African American population is our first minority group, and I think we continue to have a special obligation as policymakers to address the disparities that I've mentioned, and we, and my commitment, and I know my colleagues, uh, is to continue to keep those disparities forefront in our minds and as we're making budget decisions and legislative decisions to see how we can address those disparities. This year, again, the county's Office of Human Rights co-sponsors a civil rights historic bus tour that retraces the steps of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. There is still space available to hop on this bus. And as Lorna Virgili tells us, if you're interested, you better register now. Lorna? Sonia, the Freedom Tour will take place from April 6th through the 11th. We sat down with Jim Stowe, who is the director of the Office of Human Rights, and he tells us that if anybody wants to go, they better hurry up. There's still time to sign up for the annual Civil Rights Historic Bus Tour that takes participants to nine cities in the South during a period of six days. We are hoping to have all seats filled, and so we're encouraging everyone to come quickly uh, and to be a part of this experience. And that's what it is, it's a real experience for those who go on the tour. The first stop is in Greensboro, North Carolina. We are going there because four students back February 1st of 1960 decided to sit down at the Woolworth uh, department store counter, the lunch counter, uh, and decided to sit in a place where they were not legally supposed to sit. Uh, and that really began a series of sit-ins that, that occurred all across the United States. And, and so Greensboro will be our first stop. From there, the following stops are in Atlanta, Georgia, Birmingham, Montgomery, Selma, Tuskegee in Alabama, Cincinnati, Ohio, and Memphis, Tennessee. The cost of the six-day bus tour for a group of four is $545. For smaller groups, the fee is slightly higher. All tour costs are paid for by this fee. The price includes everything. The price includes your bus transportation, it includes your entry into the various museums uh, uh, and places of interest along the way, uh, it includes three meals, uh, it also includes uh, uh, what we like to think about, your little snacks and so forth on the bus itself. Uh, you get a t-shirt, always got to have a t-shirt. There is space available for 57 people on the bus which has Wi-Fi. If interested, call 240-777-8479 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash human rights. In Rockville, for County Report This Week, I'm Lorna Virgili. Now for some more school news. Eighth grade students in Burtonsville received an engaging social studies lessons through a unique field trip. MCPS-TV has our story. Buses, 
five through eight will be in theater four. On February 2nd, the entire eighth grade class at Benjamin Banneker Middle School boarded buses for a special field trip. Students were given the opportunity to attend a free screening of the film Selma, which chronicles a pivotal period of the civil rights movement. The idea around it came where we saw an opportunity for kids to connect with history in a way that can impact and help them to understand what's happening today. Students and teachers attended the AMC Lowe's Theater in Georgetown, which provided the private screening for the entire class. I thought it was very emotional. I actually cried during the movie. I thought it was one of the greatest movies I've seen so far. Before I was born, it was it was the struggle for a lot of people. None, none of this stuff was made up. Upon returning to school, students met with local community members who volunteered to share their experiences during the civil rights era of the 1960s. Are living up to what Dr. King was fighting for. We wanted students to really get a sense to put a face, a human body, connected to the movement so that way students didn't just see some as some movie that had nothing to do with them. I hope they understand that we all have an obligation towards social um, injustices that's very important, that they all understand that fairness sometimes is a evolutionary process that takes time, but to not give up. I think that I should be thankful for the people who were before me who have gone through all the hatred and prejudice and stuff to get me to where I can be standing right here talking to you right now. And um, I think that if there's ever a problem that I have in life, I should just go straight on, head on, just face it. Coming up next on County Report this week, Chinese New Year celebrations right here in Gaithersburg. Also, we'll tell you what the Young Activist Club in Tacoma Park is talking about. Stay with us. County Report this week is coming right back. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. This message brought to you by FEMA. Home fires occur most often in winter. Keep anything that can catch fire at least three feet from heating equipment. And never use an oven to heat your home. Stay in the kitchen when frying, grilling, or broiling food. Turn space heaters off when you leave the room or go to bed. Make sure all vents are clear of snow and ice to allow carbon monoxide to vent outside. Have your furnace, heating system, and chimneys serviced each year by a qualified professional. Learn more at www.usfa.fema.gov. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. The Young Activist Club recently held a news briefing in Tacoma Park to celebrate the passage of the county's ban on foam polystyrene at food service places and the passage of the Young Activist Act of 2014, which restricts the use of polystyrene at restaurants and other food service places in the city of Tacoma Park. The Young Activist Club has had a, already had a long lasting impact on the city. Polystyrene is it's really bad for you. It's a known neurotoxin. We were also trying to get rid of the polystyrene trays in the school cafeterias. So we have accomplished both of those things. They were the first ones really active here to say, this use of styrofoam has to stop. And so it really, in a very short period of time, went from the cafeteria to the whole county. I think we're really helping out the students 
and even the uh, teachers and employees that work at the school. And I think we're really uh, helping them and keeping them healthy and safe and helping also them make an impact on the world. I think it's good for the public to know what's happening. I think a lot of people around the neighborhood just don't know what's actually happening and are not that aware. We're making a big difference and making everyone not sick because polystyrene is really bad for you and the environment. At this briefing, the young activists also explain some of their ongoing activities, from researching issues to fundraising, as they encouraged other young people to join their new campaign, which they described as a fun and important way to make a positive impact on the environment. We wanted to demonstrate that ripping up these trays were really easy and anybody can do it and it's fun. So it's like a three in one thing. And also the reason we ripped up the trays was so that it would be easier to compost the cardboard trays. You know, I see the parents in the audience. I know many of them in their own personal histories of political activism. To see that continuing in the next generation, that's what we're all about here. Their impact here is gonna spread uh, potentially statewide and nationwide. Uh, they really have worked hard and uh, they show us how it's all done. It's the year of the goat and area residents celebrated the Chinese New Year at the Lake Forest Mall in Gaithersburg. My MC Media's Alini Barros reports. It was a snowy day outside, but inside the Lake Forest Mall, hundreds of people celebrated the 16th annual Lunar New Year Festival, hosted by the Chinese Culture and Community Service Center. It's the year of the goat, and in Chinese culture, anyone born in this year is calm and gentle. I'm in Gatesburg, where the Chinese New Year was celebrated with dance performances and fun for the whole family. I born in Yoko. <laughs> And actually, I would say, do I want to be tender? We'll be really kind to people. Every year, we are here for two weeks. Yeah. Celebrations. This, uh, every year, have a theme. This year, we, we kind of introduce Chinese music yeah, and, uh, and the instruments. To welcome the new year, people wore red to bring luck and happiness. And kids fed red envelopes with lucky money to a lion during the traditional lion dance. The line dance basically is to uh, bring in good luck, uh, to drive away any bad spirits, evil spirits, any bad luck. So we do that mainly during the Chinese New Year, obviously. And then, of course, we also do it for other celebrations. For some county and city of Gaithersburg officials, this is a time to honor Chinese culture and celebrate the county's diversity. Congratulations on this momentous occasion, proclaimed this 21st day of February 2015 and signed by me. Here you go. I always talk about Montgomery County being a, a, a you know, a, it's like um, a puzzle. And you have to make certain that all the pieces fit together. And that's, and today is another one of those days where that happens. Through March 1st, visitors will find displays of Chinese art, paintings, silk flowers, and more. You can find this schedule of events on mymcmedia.org. For County Report this week, I'm Alini Barros. Coming up on County Report this week, members of the National Philharmonic share their passion for music on stage with some students at Watkins Mill High School. And we'll take you to a student art show at the Glenview Mansion in Rockville. Don't go away. County Report this week is coming right back. Montgomery College has received two generous grants from the biopharmaceutical company AstraZeneca and its research and development arm, Metamune. The grants will support MC's independent research courses and the Achieving Collegiate Excellence and Success, or ACES initiative. With the winter weather causing all kinds of trouble, now is the time to sign up for MC Alert. Receive college closing, delay, and emergency information via text message and email. The service also sends important information about Montgomery County weather and traffic events. The Frank Islam Athenaeum Symposia Speaker Series returns to MC's Germantown campus this spring with an impressive and varied schedule of speakers. All lectures are free and open to the public.
Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. The Montgomery Philharmonic Orchestra recently performed a benefit concert at Watkins Mill High School that hit all the right notes. My MC Media's Krista Brick reports. For the fifth time, the Montgomery Philharmonic and local Montgomery County students are making beautiful music together. Watkins Mill High School was the setting for this benefit concert that raises funds for the Cluster's instrumental music program. This event gives these 85 students the chance to play with professionals. Music is a great way for students to connect collaboratively, to work together as a team during the school day, and to experience um, math, science, and the other subjects in a different way. It teaches those things that you can't teach in any other subject, those intangibles. First of all, stick to itiveness. You have to make your instrument work. And you can give up pretty easy because it's not an easy thing to do. Also the teamwork, also um, sticking up for what you believe in. And uh, we see that particularly with the students at Watkins Mill, they're kind of rabid about being in the band and being in the orchestra. A highlight of the show came when three 13-year-olds each performed solos. These three also earned scholarships from the Montgomery Philharmonic for their talent. The real prize is playing with an orchestra. If you're a middle schooler and you can solo with an orchestra, that's huge. The scholarship is nice, but the real prize is playing with the orchestra. I practice in my basement, so it's a large space and it can, the sound can expand. It was hard memorizing it, so I had to practice on memorizing it. But after I got the hang of it, it was pretty easier. And what they've learned through this program is something they can carry with them in the future. It uses math and it uses your brain. Um, and it gets you motivated about something other than video games. Well, I want to keep music in my life, um, probably play in a community, orchest community orchestra like this one. For County Report This Week, I'm Krista Brick. The Glenview Mansion in Rockville is currently holding the annual student art show. Participants and their families recently attended the opening day reception to see their works of art on display. Rockville 11's Christine Rice reports. Just as it has for decades, Glenview Mansion is hosting the Rockville Student Art Show. The exhibition displays works of art by Rockville students from kindergarten through 12th grade. March is known as Student Art Show Month, offering art exhibitions around the country. This show has been a staple of the Rockville community for 30 years. Julie Farrell, the arts program specialist for the city of Rockville, has been running the event for 10 years. It's crazy because we get hundreds of pieces that come in, uh, but the best thing is the kids who have an appreciation for art or even who might not come in, see their work displayed where normally is the work of some very well-established artist is hanging. Um, they can see their work there and it's sort of pride of place for them. Students of various ages and their families came to the opening reception to see their artwork hung in the Glenview Mansion Art Gallery. Some of this art was awarded a ribbon for first, second, or third place, or honorable mention. Yeah, definitely. I'll do it next year. This is the first time I heard about it, so I just submitted something, and um, luckily I got this honorable mention. So, yeah. Craig Witt, the temporary president of the Rockville Art League, sees this exhibition as an exciting opportunity for the students' love of art to grow. To see the kids come in and uh, they have such a deep love for art, and uh, that really caught my heart. It really touched me because, it, you know, you just don't see that a lot today. Uh, it seems like people kind of getting away from art, but the kids are still at it. They're still creative. You can catch the student art show at the Glenview Mansion until Thursday, March 5th. For more information, go to rockvillemd.gov slash Glenview Gallery. For County Report This Week, I'm Christine Rice. With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. We leave you with some wintry sights and sounds from Kentland's Market Square in Gaithersburg. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for watching.